Dun, 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 dun. Here is some truth today. Here is some truth. Dun, 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 truth today. The truth today. This is where I analyse the news via the newspapers, but try to understand what's actually happening in the news. The Sun is a, as you know, a, a, a sort of a jolly paper, still talking about Cheryl Cole, the former. What is Cheryl Cole? She was a normal girl, apparently lovely. She was on a show called X Factor. She became famous through X Factor. Now she's going back on X Factor to be a judge on X Factor. Really, she just exists in a circuit of manufactured reality. And then it comes into this, I suppose, another bit of manufactured reality. And then we sort of read it in the same context as things like GPs to visit care homes or uh, enemy of the government, defender of working class rights. It's just dies of... Apparently nothing, <laughs> just dies of nothing. The last bastion of well-paid working class jobs died of nothing. Or aeroplane falls out of sky and disappears. Missing airline pilot joked with female passengers in the cockpit at 30,000 feet. What? So he's got previous for joking. You don't reckon he jokingly crashed the aeroplane in the sky, out of the sky and into the sea, do you? Yeah, I do actually. He'd probably done it as a joke. Well, after all, look at him. He's not really properly white, is he? He looks like the sort of person who, for a bit of a laugh, might drive an aeroplane into the bottom of the sea to meet SpongeBob. <laughs> He's borrowed his hat to a bird. Step one, borrow your hat to a bird. Step two, smash aeroplane deep into the sea. <laughs> Is there a relationship between those two things? I hope not. Now that they've had to thoroughly dismiss terrorism, because it's like, look, they've just, we can't keep saying it's terrorism. There's literally no evidence. Can we say it's the pilot's fault for skylarking around with birds? Be all right then? Yeah, we'll say it's that. Interest rates to rise, all that sort of stuff that none of us truly understand. So that is placed in the same context as Cheryl Cole, nice person, presumably, but, you know, someone who exists in a circuit of manufactured entertainment, entertainment, really. So we're presented all this information as if it's of a, the same kind of significance. So how are we meant to make valid decisions on life? There it is, page three. I suppose the reason they have page three is because... I'm a 38 year old man, I've seen boobs a lot of times, it still affects me. <laughs> like, so there's not many things you can do that easily, is there, that will have an impact on people, except say things like rape, murder, pillage, war, and that, they do that as well. Like if the thing is as well, I'm not really saying I'm superior to it, if I, this is probably the stuff that's most naturally appealing to me, is to read about Simon Cowell or whatever. You know, that's what I would naturally do, I'm not going, look you should read news about really boring stuff. Like, but I'm just saying, why are they doing this? Tesco's is the biggest sort of uh, British uh, supermarket. There's their friendly, chummy little advert as they drain our country of all its money. What is it, one pound in seven spent there? Look at that, it's like, it's like it's talking to an idiot child, isn't it? Look at these colours. Hey, save up your 20p with a club card. Kiss all your money. Really what this is, the Sun newspaper, is a table upon which Tesco stands with an erection, waggling it in your face. As the internet is 25 today, many unhappy returns. The dark web, how an idealistic invention turned into a monster. Suppose it's a coincidence that it's wearing a hood and it's got a sort of a mask on comparable to the anonymous movement and that the internet is used often to organise protest movements uh, that uh, stand in opposition to the aims of corporate entities like the Sun that are largely supportive of traditional politics and a traditional commercial ideology. So, Next to it, like a mouse, like a noose, look. A mouse is like a dude. Look at this faceless bastard. He'll probably hang you on his birthday. Who celebrates their birthday with a hanging? This faceless internet monster. That is the internet. It's interesting because that's an indication of paganism, you know, like that we need to sort of have emblems and symbols to understand reality. The internet's too big and vast and myriad and could be good and could be bad. So it's to provide a, an easy angle Turn it into this weird, faceless hangman who represents alternative values. And then you can reach an easy opinion without having to think. Bloody pervert! <laughs> you bloody pervert! You're a bloody pervert! Independent, some stuff on Bob Crow there. Friends and enemies unite in tribute to Bob Crow. He was the head of their... Uh, union of transport workers, probably of course strikes do cause problems, that's the point of strikes, so that uh, the workers have some form of power so that they don't come utterly exploited. If you break the power of the unions, what will happen? I suppose workers will have no power. Have we broken the power of unions? Yeah, we've basically done that mostly. I suppose you get accused of hypocrisy more 
it, like, let's say you're a sort of a died in the wall business person, all you're trying to do is make money, or you're a Tory politician. It's harder to be accused of hypocrisy because your stated objectives are quite malevolent and selfish. If you're saying, like, look, I really want to, I'm in this for equality and to represent people without a voice, then, like, immediately you're exposed because what you're claiming to be is. So, uh, like you're setting a standard for yourself that's higher to ma harder to maintain. This man's in charge of your money. <laughs> that's the chance of our country. That means he's in charge of the money of England. Look at him. He's got this boat. Hello. Hey, Mum. Hey, Dad. I got that job. Well, we always do you or George. Is it because of natural ability? I think you know it isn't, George. Look at yourself in the mirror. Next time you pass a reflective surface, George, I want you to pause for a moment. Look deep, deep into your eyes. There's a twinkle deep within there. That's a divine spark. You've forgotten that, George, because you're more interested in this weird red lunchbox thing within which you claim the decimation of the dreams of millions and millions of people and the destruction of society's most vulnerable members. Fetch Mom, Dad! Well, they didn't used to do this in newspapers. Have the guy that's written it popping up. Hello, I'm saying this now. Oh, thanks, Hamish. <sighs> this is the mood of the mail. Oh, bloody hell. Yeah, my varicose vein's are blowing up. Yeah, bloody next door. Yeah, they keep parking in the drive. <laughs> NHS 2014, sick boy. Two, left on two chairs for six hours with a drip in his arm because no bed was available. Right, well, there's only one conclusion to draw from this. The National Health Service has got... Too much money, let's give it less, let's privatise it and give it to people whose only interests are economic. That is what we can conclude from this image of a boy in a chair. Now, that's written into sort of illicit responses, like, oh, I think it's disgraceful, the NHS, blah, 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 blah. yeah, it should be shut down, what's the point, they're not fulfilling their brief. Then, so when people go, then the government will say, the only solution is to privatise the NHS. And you'll go, or I'll go, yeah, I remember, I see that boy in a chair. Perhaps it is good to privatise the NHS. You may be PM, but I'm in the driving seat now, Daddy. <laughs> Child mangles Prime Minister's head. Let's see if there is an agenda, see if we can glean some agenda behind it. Wearing a multi-coloured -poke, multi polka dot safety helmet with a father holding her steady by the ankles. That's weird. Florence could not resist cheekily covering Mr Cameron's eyes before grabbing his face with both hands, making it clear who was boss. Alright, so it's humanising him, isn't it? Oh, like, even if he's Prime Minister of a whole country and could destroy communities with a stroke of his pen or help to fuel hatred against immigrants, when it comes to the quote, he's just a lovable old dad. Mr Cameron 47 did not seem bothered who saw this display of closeness with his youngest and this set of pictures has been approved by Downing Street for publication. Oh, that's interesting, isn't it? So they're sort of... They're like that. So there's been a discussion about this. Like in Downing Street, they've gone, well, look, it makes you look good because one of the things people are saying, David, is that you know how you went to Eton and then you went to Oxford and then like, you've just lived this life of privilege and you know how you're really sort of like uncaring and cruel to poor people and disabled people and stuff like that. Yeah. People are starting to think you're being human. Put papers of you being nice to your kid in and then that at least offers some glimmer of humanity to people as they trudge through their grim, glum lives knowing you could do so much more to help them. So we approve these photos. Then the male has to put this approved because they're more nervous about press intrusion. So there is some interesting grammar about a newspaper's work in this simplistic puff piece about a man and a child. After dropping Florence off, it was business as usual for the Prime Minister as he dashed back for a cabinet meeting. Mr Cameron had spoken candidly about the challenge of juggling the school run with running the country. He said maybe once a week, sometimes once a fortnight, tragically, sometimes once a month. I managed to take my children to school. But it's got to be possible to be a decent husband, a good father and a good Prime Minister at the same time. Well, we don't know if you're a decent husband. Well, we don't know if you're a good father. Good Prime Minister, you are not. You are a cruel, cold man. All right, let's... Uh, See if there's any information that can be useful. We've glugged down a load of bile into our minds. We've filled ourselves with radioactive nonsense. Let's see if there's any truth that we have access to somewhere in nature, somewhere in the springtime, somewhere in the animalistic natural self that's connected to all beings. Is there some hope? Is there some optimism? Once you decide you want to be unconditionally happy, something inevitably will happen that challenges you. Oh, right, OK, I've decided to be unconditionally happy, though. This test of your commitment is exactly what stimulates spiritual growth. In fact, it is the unconditional aspect of your commitment that makes this the highest path. It's so simple. You have to decide whether or not you will break your vow. When everything is going well, it's easy to be happy. But the moment something difficult happens, it's not so easy. You tend to find yourself saying, but I didn't know this was going to happen. I, I didn't think I'd miss my flight. I didn't think Sally would show up at the party wearing the same dress that I had on. 
It was terrible when that happened. I didn't think that someone would dent my brand new car one hour after I got it. Are you really willing to break your vow of happiness because these events took place? So I suppose what it is, is to, like, we're trying to have a relationship with some sort of higher consciousness, some higher version of the self, to picture in the mind a version of the self that is more beautiful, and to remain in contact with that in spite of the constant interruptions, distractions, and disruptions that society, the world, and everyday life, not just great big, you know, sort of conspiratorial media empires and governments and big business, but just like, you know, tripping over, stubbing your toe, having an argument with someone on the street, or oh, your bike's got a flat tyre, whatever it is. Can you, through these events, on the mundial plane, on the plane of Earth, on the material solid plane, maintain contact with something higher? Like there's a subtler realm that we can't access because our senses are here for more gross and obvious frequencies, more obvious frequencies, but behind that there is a subtler realm. And if we can maintain some kind of intuitive connection with that, all this stuff will be less important. That was some truths, that was some truths today. That was some truths, that was some truths today. Some truths today. Dum, 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 dum. I'm like a proper news person now. Like I'll go at the end and I'll talk to the woman one. Hello, woman one. What do you think? I know I didn't really get on with you. I'm trying my best.